Martin was uh, Martin and I know each other very well, so he he knew that um, I'd like to know obviously a, a head of a public announcement. So he was kind enough to come and speak with me and uh, and tell me. I mean, I, I obviously knew it was in in play, but uh, was absolutely thrilled and proud to learn that uh, the nomination had been successful. It's a it's a big accolade for the the institution as well as the individual. You know, this is an individual that. Of course, has got it for. I've been awarded it because this is somebody who's a top scientist in a top school, somebody who's been a fabulous communicator, who's done so much through a periodic table of videos to raise interest in in the science. But he's also part of a university community that he's grown up in. He's been here for thirty-five years, and part of a university community is very proud of what he's done. So this is a huge honour for the university as well as for Martin personally. One level, it's not life-changing, but it is a very warm feeling to know that you've had that kind of recognition, because it's a very public recognition. But I don't suppose that uh, it'll change what they call him in the school. You don't think they're going to start calling him Sir Martin or anything like that? I suspect not. It was an astonishing thing, actually, um, to receive a letter to say that the Prime Minister was recommending you know, this honour. Just an astonishing thing. It just stopped me in, in my tracks. Uh, for a whole host of reasons, but especially because of the, you know, my own background. It's not a background where you would expect <laughs> this kind of thing to, to come by. Uh, if my experience is anything to go by, uh, Martin will just be overwhelmed in the days after the announcement. It was just astonishing. The deluge of email, texts, cards, letters, just astonishing. And, and that's for me was one of the most wonderful things of all, to be honest, because I hadn't really anticipated how much pleasure so many other people would take in this award. And that was a thrill. Well, it's a very public honor. And within the honor system, of course, it's the highest civil honor that, that one can receive. And there are relatively few. I've not seen the list for um, the New, York, New Year's Honours list. My guess is that there'll probably only be about 10 knighthoods. So it's, it's a very rare, very rare accolade. And people, you know, people, how can I put it? Not, not many people in our day-to-day -day engagements know individuals who've had a, a knighthood. You know, right down to the, the, the chap that sits behind me at Forest at the city ground, uh, not long after when he'd seen pictures in the Nottingham Post of the investiture, you know, immediately tapped me on the shoulder. He was just thrilled and made the point he'd never you know, <laughs> met anybody who had a, had a knighthood before. Yeah, so you get a choice, or well, most people get a choice. The investitures take place at Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace, and Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh. Um, mine was at Buckingham Palace. I was fortunate enough that Her Majesty the Queen was the one who presided at the investiture. Yes, indeed, there was a sword. It's not a myth. I was tapped on both shoulders. The only thing that was missing was a rise to David. That, that bit doesn't actually happen. Beautifully done. I mean, the whole thing is, as you would expect, expertly organized. But I was surprised at how personal they make it at every, you know, every stage, every changeover. And in, in, in my case, it was an, an, an additional kind of, for me, um, pleasure was the fact that it took place on November the 11th on Armistice Day. The whole ceremony began with a two minute silence and that just gave you the opportunity to take in what this was all about. What's, the, what's it like being tapped with the sword? That's the thing that just seems so, like, seems so magical to me. Is, that, is it a bit of a blur? Or is it, does she do it hard? Or do you even remember? You know, I, I do remember. I'll tell you why I remember. Because beforehand, they, they take you in for a briefing, and there's a stool there, and they take you through kneeling down and so on. And to be honest, I thought, well, what's the point of that? But I did it. And an official came up to me and said, uh, Sir David, when... When you went down, you instinctively put your head down. Do not do that. Keep your head up, otherwise you don't see what's happening and you'll miss the moment. And it was wonderful advice. I kept my head up. There was lovely eye contact there. You can see the sword coming down. It you know, taps both shoulders and um, then 
Her Majesty had a, a few words, asked about my career as an economist, asked about work here at the university. It was great. Do you have any other advice for, well, he'll be Sir Martin by the time people watch this video. Do you have any other advice about things he should or shouldn't do? Or? Well, you know, I um, obviously took my family down. It's a once in a lifetime thing. I made sure we went down the day before we stayed overnight. Just take everything in. Make sure that you order the DVD because they do a great job, fantastic job, and it's such a you know such a wonderful memory of the of the occasion, and just enjoy it. When you look at things that are accomplished by people at the university, the two Nobel prizes spring to mind. How do things like these occasional knighthoods rank in the scheme of things that can happen in in a university's life? Fantastic public recognition, and. Um, you know, there aren't, there aren't many of them. Uh, and, and, and I think the university having the opportunity to celebrate an accolade like this for someone who's as loyal and as committed and as straightforward as Martin is just a wonderful thing. When I first got my doctorate and was called Dr. Polyakov, the only reason that I found the doctorate useful was to complain in shops.